How many wide receivers do you think the Bills are going to carry? Like, it's a fascinating... Seven? Seven. You know that there's only 53 spots on a team, right? Well aware. Well aware. Seven. Siete. <laughs>
you already have him on a four-year controllable deal. You don't want to try to break that. If you cut him, he clears waivers, you put him on your practice squad. Now, now he's on a series the, of one years. Now, now he's on the one year. Now game. you're playing the restricted free agent game, which you already have a couple other guys to use that with. And that's an interesting point to bring up is you that you can only use one. You can uh, the restricted three. free agents. You can only yeah you can yeah you can only give them one of three designations, and it's original round, first round, or second round. Yes. Right. That's what you can tender them at. And if they weren't drafted, right, you only then, have one or two to play with. Uh, if they weren't drafted, you got to do one or first or right. second. Yeah. Yeah. From my yeah, from my understanding of restricted free agent. Yeah, that's, that's why right. the Gillisley one, he was picked in the fifth round. You got right. a fifth round pick from the New England Patriots for that, which you used to draft Matt Milano. Right. Okay. Yeah. I always like bring that up. So go ahead. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a nice little. I nice made little that one. argument in a in a group chat when someone said, "Yeah, we got Milano. They got another ring." <laughs> <laughs> You son of a biscuit! Not like Gillisley helped. <laughs> I, I see. I see your point on that, right? I yeah. see. I see your point on that. Yeah. Um, but you already have Andre Roberts. You do need another kick returner. You notice they haven't shown any of the secondary guys returning kicks, right? So that tells me they're thinking of carrying two return guys on the roster right now, yeah. Because they haven't shown any of the secondary guys. They haven't shown. Okay. Anybody. Like, we know that... Poyer uh, goes back there. We know that... Oh, we, we've seen Hyde do it, right? We've seen Hyde return kicks, okay. return punts. I thought it was Poyer. But I don't really... I mean, as a safety net, okay, right? If you just need somebody to catch it, I understand. That. Yeah. But you really don't want to get him hurt, you know? So you're going to kind of shy away from that pretty significantly. Oh, no, so, he's not going to return it. Uh, right, no, that's here. what I mean. Yeah. But still having him out there is a risk. Now, are they going to keep all three and put one on the practice squad where there's only one that's got practice squad eligibility? It's Ray Ray McLeod. So that's where I'm keeping seven, but really only six, right? I'm keeping McLeod, but I'm putting him on the practice squad. I'm letting David Sills walk at this point. Yeah. He was totally useless in another preseason game. What you need to do, with, I know, because we see, okay, well, McKenzie had a great game. He, he showed out. Okay, great. McLeod was nowhere to be found. You're telling me that McLeod couldn't have – taking that screen pass and run that? Right. Okay. That's what you have to ask yourself when you start to determine whether or not you should keep guys on this team or not keep guys on this team. Right. Did he have to do anything to get the ball? McC- McKenzie just had to stand there. Uh, no. He was he was very patient waiting that waiting for that block to develop. You don't know if a younger guy does that because he'd be too excited. Okay. I understand that. But if you're, thinking, if, you're, if you're thinking to yourself, we have a guy on this team that could still do that if given that opportunity to run that play. Could Sills have done that? I don't know if he has the speed to do that. McKenzie does have the speed to do that, and he's a return guy, so he knows about weaving in and out of guys and waiting for blocks and setting up blocks. Right. That's what makes him valuable in that respect. So you have to ask yourself, like the whole Duke Williams touchdown where he jumped in the air. True Barkley threw it. Barkley's been taking care of a lot of these guys. I understand that. But if you have Duke, who else does that on this team that's not a tight end? Mm-hmm. Okay, he brings something unique. That's what you determine whether or not you're going to keep a guy. Right. And I think you, you're of that mindset where – he brings an element that's not on this wide receiver core right now right. that you could use. Um, so you got Beasley, who's probably the nastiest route runner right now. Absolutely. You got Brown, who takes the cover off the defense, and they've already seen enough for him to say, "Listen, just kind of rest against yeah. Carolina, whatever. Right. We'll get some other guys in here. We want to get Foster with the ones and see how he performs. Didn't perform horrible. Didn't really see much action as far no. as the ball coming at him, but didn't <clears throat> perform horribly. So they wanted to see. Okay, Foster. What does he do? Um, well, he takes the cover off the defense. He runs. He runs pretty good routes when he runs the right ones. And just to just to hark back to Foster's performance in the game, they're working on Allen getting the underneath game opened up, which is not what Foster gives you, right? No. So if they're trying to help Allen, like, listen, let's work on the underneath stuff. Let's get that going. Let's get those wheels spinning. Foster is everything that that's not, mm-hmm. right? So I get why Foster wasn't a major target, but also he didn't really earn a lot of targets. For me, Foster is a concoction of a lot of different guys in this roster. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can he go up and get it? Yeah. Can he track the ball? Yeah. Can he weave in and out? Yeah. He can do a lot of little things good, but other guys are exceptional at those things that he can do. Sure. So that's why it's so tough to put him in a category because, okay, you do a lot of these little things well. You have familiarity with the offense. 
where's your head at, man? Well, lost lost in the sauce is the fact that he was an undrafted free agent last year. Mm-hmm. It's easy to hide at Alabama with all that talent. Well, I'm pretty confident that people probably weren't, even though he went to Alabama, banging down his door. Oh. Like they like the Bills made it appear with David Sills. Which just has to make things more frustrating. Right? They got that whole organization involved trying to get him there, and he's a ghost. He's a ghost. Maybe that's their way of hiding him. He'll be practice squad. Are you are you saying at this point that Sills isn't even gonna be on the practice squad? Yeah, I would just I would just let that go. Ooh. I would just let that go. Woo! So who's your who's your last two guys? I already named my whole okay. my whole wide receiver. You got Duke and Ray Ray. I've got Duke and McKenzie, okay. and, you got and Ray then Ray Ray to the practice squad. Okay, so um, the and only- Cam Phillips is the one that a lot of people are going to say, "Well, what about Cam Phillips? Cam Phillips can do everything that Duke Williams can do." Yes, you're right. Cam Phillips got knocked around this preseason game. Looks like it might be a concussion. We don't could be a neck. We don't really know what the injury oh, is Cam right Lewis. now. Wasn't that the defensive guy? No, I thought that was Cam Phillips that got. Uh, injured because Lewis got hurt earlier in the game. The corner. I don't see any news on an injury from him. Cut. See. Go to banged up. Banged up bills. Right. Yeah, that's a good follow. What a what a very unique idea. I think that's oh amazing. yeah. What's going on with this guy? This guy's a medic. great follow. Oh yeah. If you guys aren't following banged up bills, yeah, do it. Follow him. So Cam Phillips lost snaps to Duke Williams because Cam Phillips was taking was taking second team snaps in the first preseason game. Well, they want to look at him. They want to look at Duke, see what's going on. All right, right. We've seen what we want from Cam. Let's right. look at Duke. Well, so the question becomes Cam Phillips or Duke Williams, right? Or both. Like you wouldn't give – you wouldn't alternate snaps unless you were considering at least one of them, Right. I think they're just trying to get a look at him. I think they're just trying to look at these guys. Like, listen, we haven't seen Duke. Or we've seen him, not 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 in the capacity that we want to see what his talents are. What are his talents? Can he block inside? Can he go up and get the ball? Can he run a route over the middle? Because we were worried about that. We were worried about him running a slant and having to de- defeat press coverage. Right. It wasn't exactly press. No. However, was able to get open in the middle, use his hands, catch the ball to it. He did the things that you wanted to see from him to do, mm-hmm. which is great. Uh, Cam, you probably saw those things the week before. Now you have a decision to make. Okay, right. do you keep a 26-year-old practice squad guy? Well, so, Or do you keep him on the roster or put Phillips on the practice squad? So the next game is the most critical for all these guys, right? So we're talking about these fringe roster players. So you're talking about Duke Williams, Cam Phillips, Ray Ray McLeod, Isaiah McKenzie, right? Mm-hmm. The next game is the most critical because – that's the game where you're going to see the starters the most, right? So watch yes. that rotation. If the Bills go five wide, who's in that five wide? That's a big question to answer right now. Because even though the Bills are running short on tight end depth, it's just giving DeMarco more snaps. Five wide is... There's kind of like got to be an asterisk next to so it. So let's say you're in, you're the third, you're in the third series. Of the third preseason game, the Bills go five wide. Who's their five wide? Jeez. Am I putting starters in there? Yeah. No, what I wanted to say for the asterisk real quick before I get to that. The asterisk you're going to have to put in there as far as it goes. They use McCoy in their five wide. I understand that. Which I think is beautiful. Because from when they're looking at the personnel on the field, Mm -hmm. they're yeah, it changes the personnel look. If you have a linebacker in front of him. Or covering him, more, more, more than likely it's man. If you have a corner on him, more than likely it's zone. It's right. like a tip-off. Right. So that's why you'll see the Patriots all the time go to five wide, and they put Devlin, Devlin out, at, out at wide because they come out and everybody goes, oh, they're in 21 personnel or whatever the hell the personnel package is. They're looking at the guys in the field, and then they go five wide. And you're in your base defense. You're like, oh, got a troll linebacker out. Yeah, which takes the guy out of the middle. So if I'm going five, third series of the game, I'm going five wide. Am I, is it, do I have the starters to pick from? You're looking at Bill. You're looking at trying to make a, dis, a roster decision, right, on a few guys. Okay. So the third series, let's say the Bills scored in their first two series, right? Same, much like they did 
this last game, let's say the Bills scored in their first two series, that third series gives you an opportunity to take a look at some guys with the starters. Who are the receivers you're putting out in a five wide? Who do you need to see to make a decision whether they're going to make this team or not? Ooh. I'm sorry. I was just thinking of, of, of a five wide set where on one side I would put Brown on the outside, Beasley in the slot. Mm-hmm. On the other side, I would have a bunch formation with the middle guy up on the line. Mm-hmm. That middle guy being Duke Williams. Uh-huh. On the outside, I have Zay. Mm-hmm. On the inside of them, I have McKenzie. Okay. So that's so those you are... have Duke clearing out, right? And then you can run whatever kind of combination you want with McKenzie and Zay underneath them, right? So that to me tells me that you think Duke's going to make the team. I think that right now that is, if I had to go five wide right now, that's what I would do. Or I can put Foster just as easily in that spot where Duke is. So I put right. Foster there. Okay. I think I put Foster there because I had him originally on my squad right. of seven. Right. I, didn't have, I didn't have Duke in my seven. So, right. Uh, but the more we keep talking, the more you keep brainwashing me. That's what happens in this freaking conversation. No, I'm just asking questions, man. I no, just, no, it's a great thing to bring up because you have to watch how that th- that next preseason game breaks down. Mm-hmm. You have to look at who's taking snaps, when are they taking snaps. Because all this talk about Cam Phillips, Duke Williams, Isaiah McKenzie, Ray Ray McLeod, it all gets put to the fire in that third preseason game. If that offense goes out, the starters go out with Brown, Beasley, uh, Foster, Zay, and they don't go anywhere, you're not seeing these guys rotate in. They're going to keep their guys out there till they can get it right because they need the reps. But if the Bills go out there and they score on the first couple drives, they're not going to pull Allen. They're not going to pull the starters. They're going to start saying, okay, we need to make some roster decisions. Let's start mixing in these bubble I, guys and seeing what Why it, wouldn't what they shakes. do that immediately then? Because the game itself does not mean anything. It's all about growth. Yeah. All right? Okay. Allen's not working with these guys a lot, like the the, the uh, second and third teamers. Mm-hmm. He's usually working on chemistry with the first teamers. Mm-hmm. That's that's what he's doing. So chemistry is going to be off a little bit. But you're going to see how they adjust to him. If yeah, you, but this if, is, you're asking – this is a philosophical question. This is a, co- this is a preference question. McDermott's going to roll those guys out there and see what it looks like. If they don't score on their first two possessions mm-hmm. – He's not going to – I think he's still going to stay the course. He's still going to rotate the other guys in. You think so? Yeah. You know, I may be a little gun-shy from that Tampa Bay game I went to in 2015 where I saw E.J. Manuel and the starters play a whole half of football in the third preseason game. And then I got to see the Dennis Dixon show immediately after that where he fumbled the ball like six times. It was okay. horrifying. So you're, you're scarred. I, right. might be a little, I might be a little gun-shy there. That's all right. But he'll stay the course and be like, hey, listen, this is why we got to grow. If you give them, if you let them go out for another series, A, you risk injury. B, if they end up scoring on the third series, yes, it's it's great for them to be like, okay, hey, we, we made our adjustments and we were able to score. But then you're putting stuff on tape. I don't I don't like that. I don't like, if you go out two series, you don't score. Like, hey, these are the things we need to work on. And then you've got a tape that goes out to all the other teams that you say, okay, listen, this is what stopped the Bills. But the Bills are already adjusting for that anyway. All right, so recap your seven. Beasley, Brown, Jones, Foster, McKenzie, and McLeod. And close to that. Roberts. And Roberts, yeah. Okay, I'm with you there because I think – Again, the Bills are not showing any interest in taking any of these secondary guys and putting them in return, right? So that tells me they're going to carry two returners on the team. And they're going to protect the third because you never know. Finding a return guy is a pain in the So I really, I really do think it's going to turn out to be... I, I know people are going to crucify me for this. Daniel Gari specifically because he doesn't understand why I dislike Zay Jones. But... I mean, Zay's roster spot, in my opinion, is up for grabs right now. After a while, controllable contracts only mean so much if you can't produce. Yeah. I he mean, didn't catch a ball, did he? No, I don't think so. So, uh, Beasley, Brown, Roberts, um, Foster. Foster. I got the last two, two more. more. was uh, McKenzie and Duke Williams. Not hateful. It's pretty bad. I mean, no, it's not hateful. It's not hateful compared to the rest of the AFC East. Because you can do stuff with with 
Williams in there as, as an H back. And in the multitude of formations that Dable wants to run, yeah, you he's proven he can block inside if you needed him to against the third team Carolina team. Can he do that against the first team? We'll see. It's just we'll see. 